Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to be working through another kinematics example. And just to distinguish this one from other examples, I'm going to give it the name rods and roller. Our situation here is that we have two rods that are connected together by a pinned joint. The other end of the first rod is connected to a stationary pin joint, and the end of the second rod is connected to a roller. So the first thing we're going to do is identify three points of interest, the first of which is this end joint A, the second is the connection of the two rods here at B, and the final one is the center point of this roller, which we're going to call C. Second, we're going to give a definition for the position. So if I draw a horizontal line between these two points, I can define an angle theta that defines the position of the rod with respect to that horizontal line. And I'm going to say that this is a symmetric problem about the center point B. So we're going to end up with both of these angles being the same theta. Because it's symmetric, these lengths both need to be the same. So I'm going to call both of these L. And finally, I need to know something about this roller, so I'm going to call that radius R. So the purpose of kinematics is to find relationships between the various linear and angular velocities. The only rotation rates that we need to worry about are the rotation rates of the rods AB and BC. The velocities we need to worry about are velocity of A, velocity of B, and velocity of C. My plan is to first find the velocity of B based on the rotation rate of this rod, and then extend that to find the velocity of C. Once we find the two velocities, then we can find our accelerations, and that's as far as kinematics can take us. So first, let's write our kinematic equation for the velocity of B. We're saying that this is equal to the velocity of A plus the velocity of B with respect to A, which is just equal to omega of this rod, crossed with the position of B with respect to A. Now we're going to leave this as an unknown, except to say that it's going to be in the K direction, but we need to define this position of B with respect to A. The position is equal to this distance L in the direction defined by theta. The direction is just going to be cosine theta in the I direction and sine theta in the J direction, all of that multiplied by L. So we end up with L cosine theta in the I direction plus L sine theta in the J direction. So writing out VB, we know that the velocity of A is zero because we have that pinned joint. The angular velocity here is still going to be omega AB, but I'm going to use the scalar magnitude and say that this is in the K direction. This is going to be crossed with the position vector that we just found. And then to simplify, I can take this L and this omega out and then go and resolve this k crossed into the cosine theta i plus sine theta j. So k crossed into i is j, so we end up with cosine theta j. k crossed into j is a negative i, so we have minus sine theta i. And this right here is the velocity of b. So now let's do the same for c with respect to b. So the velocity of C is just going to be equal to the velocity of B plus the velocity of C with respect to B. So this ends up being VB plus omega of BC crossed into this position vector of C with respect to B. Once again, we still need to write this position vector. This time we have a positive L cosine theta in the I direction, and we have a negative L sine theta in the J direction. So the full position is L cosine theta I minus L sine theta J. Now, I also want to point out that we know VB, and we know something about VC. Specifically, we know that VC is only going to be in the I direction. We're going to assume that this roller isn't lifted off the surface, and that it's only moving in I. So that means that we can write this VC vector is equal to the magnitude, but we're going to assume that that magnitude is all in the I direction. VC in the I direction is going to be equal to this VB, which we know. And we'll do the same thing, just substituting in omega BCK for our omega term and substituting in our value for the position vector. For that, we end up with this omega bck 
crossed into the position vector that we had, which is L cosine theta i minus L sine theta j. If we simplify, the first part remains unchanged, and the second part is going to look similar. K crossed into i is still j, so this first part remains cosine theta j. K crossed into j is negative i, plus this negative sign here means that we have a plus sine theta i. Now our next step is going to be to write the i and j components of this equation. So the i part of this equation will have the vc term on the left, it'll have the sine terms of each of these. So you end up with L omega AB times sine theta, and we have a negative that we need to incorporate. And then we add in the other side, which is L omega BC, again multiplied by sine theta, and this has no negative, it stays positive. Our J equation has nothing on the left-hand side, but we have L omega AB cosine theta, which is positive, plus L omega BC times cosine theta, which is also positive. And from this, we can see readily that omega AB must equal negative omega BC. And just so I don't have to keep out writing the suffix, I'm going to call omega BC just omega. So this becomes a negative omega. So what does that mean for us? Now we can go back everywhere that we see either of these terms, we can substitute in just our omega that we're defining. So omega AB is equal to negative omega. So I can write that in here. And then we have omega AB and omega BC here. So this becomes a negative omega, and this becomes a positive omega. And then we can say that this negative and this negative actually cancel out. So our final equation for the I direction is going to end up being BC, and we can add these two together to end up with two times omega L sine theta. Now we can go a step further and actually look at the velocity of our roller here, specifically the angular velocity. If we say that there is a no-slip condition on this surface, then that results in the kinematic equation r times omega c, where this is simply the angular velocity of our cylinder here, is equal to vc, which is the movement of the center of rotation of that roller. And what that yields is that omega c is equal to 2 omega L over R times sine of theta. We're defining omega to be positive clockwise in this case. Omega of the rods, we're saying for BC, omega is positive counterclockwise, and for AB, omega is positive clockwise. And that just came from this equation down here. So we have already arrived at our two velocity equations. So next, what we need to look at is the acceleration. So the acceleration of B based on A is simply equal to the acceleration of A plus the angular acceleration of that rod AB crossed into the position vector of B with respect to A minus omega AB squared multiplied by the position vector. Now I'm going to skip a couple of steps here because we've done a lot of the work for this first term already. So I'll just substitute out this omega AB for the alpha AB and we can move on. This becomes L times alpha AB. Remember that this first term goes away because we have a pinned joint. Multiplied by cosine theta J minus sine theta I which looks exactly like our term up here, except that we have alpha AB instead of omega. But then we need to substitute out this omega squared term. Now we said that omega AB is equal to negative omega, but since we're squaring it, the negative doesn't matter. This becomes omega squared multiplied by this RB with respect to A term. So this becomes an L. We multiplied by cosine theta in the I direction plus sine theta in the j direction. So now we need to do the same thing for the acceleration of c. So we're going to say that this is equal to the acceleration of b plus the angular acceleration of the rod bc crossed into the position vector of c with respect to b minus this omega term squared multiplied by the position again. And I'm not going to write out the full acceleration of b again since we have it right here. 
but we will write out the rest of this. This first term ends up looking like the velocity term up here. So this will end up being a cosine theta j plus sine theta i. And then again, we subtract off the omega squared term. And this time, our position vector is up here. So essentially, we're adding these terms to these to get the full acceleration of c. So in doing so, our sine terms here are going to cancel out. Those go away completely, and we can write the j part of this pretty easily. We're constraining this piece to the i direction. So the acceleration in the j direction is going to be zero. So if I write the j component of this equation, I can say that zero is equal to the j component here plus the j component here. And we end up with the same situation that we had for the angular velocities. We can say that alpha AB is equal to a negative alpha BC. And once again, I'm just going to call that negative alpha. So the result of that is that we can change these alpha terms into just our alpha magnitude over here. So writing our I equation, we end up with something that looks very much like our velocity up here. So this becomes the acceleration of C, which we said was all in the I direction, is equal to 2 times alpha L sine theta. But then we also need to incorporate the omega squared portion of that. And that just looks like negative 2 omega squared L cosine theta. And once again, we can use the no slip condition in order to say that the angular acceleration of our roller is equal to this linear acceleration divided by the radius. So our final two equations are the I part here and the equation that connects it to the angular acceleration of the cylinder. So this is everything we need in order to connect the linear and the angular velocities and accelerations.